This is the 10th and final video in a series about how I read or listened to 10 books in Swedish in a single month. But because this series has been going for quite some time now, it's since become 20 books in three months. And this video is about my very favorite way to listen to audiobooks and why I find it so freaking awesome. Just before we get on to that, Financial Lamont, who is an irritating presence necessary to the continuation of this channel, asked me friendly Lamont, to tell you that both of us and our families appreciate your support over on Patreon, where you can get bonus content to do with language learning. That's out of the way. Nishabe. Language learning might seem to be a relatively cheap hobby compared with, say, golf, motorsport, sailing, photography, there isn't a huge cash outlay, but there is a massive time investment and most people value their time. So in that way, it's an expensive hobby, which is why I was thrilled to discover that one thing that we all need to do can not only be done at the same time as learning a language, but in my experience actually enhances the learning to the point that I would want to do it anyway. As you probably guessed, I'm talking about exercise. <laughs> no one exercises like this. Comment if you do exercise like that. Yeah, that's specifically what I do, just that. There is this extremely intuitive idea that we do our best learning and remembering when we're in a state of deep focus. I once had a vision of turning this room into a place optimized for the best focused learning with every detail attended to, to promote the most attentive state of focus and learning. Now, I'm not saying that learning a language doesn't require some deeply focused time. I know that someone is going to try to argue with me saying that, even though it's not what I'm saying, I don't care, not what I'm saying. However, thorough subconscious acquisition of a language, which is what we're going for after learning enough that content becomes somewhat comprehensible, needs not, and I will even say cannot, be done using only deeply focused states. It will require some percentage of time to be spent in a state of divided attention. In video nine, I mentioned three different states of attention that I've gone between when listening to Swedish, and I called one of them lightly divided attention. That is, you're doing something else at the same time as you're listening, but nothing that requires you to think on an active level. The fourth book that I read in the month was all about the benefits of exercise and makes the point that exercise is probably the most underrated thing ever, which I knew on a surface level, but I haven't really done anything about for the last year or so, which means I'm pretty unfit. So rather than running, which I used to do a lot of, I decided to just get back into walking. But since I was also trying to take in 10 books during the month, I obviously chose to do this whilst listening to audiobooks. Like if you know me, that's not going to surprise you at all. I do almost everything whilst listening to Swedish audiobooks. If you haven't watched the ninth video of this series, then you should. But my basic hypothesis was that you ought to do something to occupy the sort of surface level of your thinking because otherwise, at least for me, that level kind of dominates and I end up not hearing the book in my ears. So I was delighted to find that walking is one of the best activities to get myself to really listen to the story. For the first benefit, you're exercising. I mean, yeah, okay, it's not very rigorous exercise for most of us, but it is something. And if you're quite fit, then you can probably jog and still get all the benefits that I'm talking about here. But most of us just need to do some exercise every day. I don't think anyone's out there arguing that we all get too much exercise. Then there's the fact that it's just an awesome way to listen to a story. Like when I first started listening to a Game of Thrones, I deliberately went for this 90 minute walk in some forest hills that I live near. And that just put me in this setting really quickly. And now that's where I picture this whole world existing and playing out. So it made this immersive environment even more immersive from day one. But the advantage of walking and listening at the same time that I was most surprised by was my retention of the details of the story. I'm not gonna get nitpicky about whether this leads to better linguistic acquisition. I don't know, but my hunch would be yes. But when it comes to the details of the story, I find my retention of those to be markedly better than it is when I'm listening or reading under almost any other conditions. People have researched and written about the human brain's capacity for spatial detail and how we're much better at remembering places that we've been just once before when compared with say names that we've heard even 10 or 11 times. And this fits perfectly with my experience of being able to remember the story well, along with where I was when I was hearing those particular events. Like I said, my hunch is that this would also promote better language acquisition. 
but even if it doesn't, it's just a beautiful way of hearing a story. There's something about having a story play out in your mind whilst also taking in the real world around you. And the other thing is it's much less tiresome. Like even if your comprehension is low, you'll find you can walk and have audio in your ears for much longer than you would last just trying to sit and listen to that same audio. If you haven't yet done this, then give it a try. And if you think it sucks, then leave me a comment telling me that it sucks and I'll say you're wrong and you'll say I'm stupid and I'll say, yeah, you're stupid. And you'll say, what even is this channel? And I'll say, I asked first and you'll be like, that doesn't make sense. You didn't ask me anything. And I'll say, get lost.